What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today it is the Lazy Days channel and we're back at it again with some more history reaction for you guys today and we're starting our Napoleon Marshall Monday series for you. Um, there's six episodes in this series so it'll be over the next sort of six weeks you'll find this one episode every Monday. We're going to start with the first episode and it's just going to be part one for us because there's a lot of names that we don't well, want to Yeah, we're, we're going to attempt to, <laughs> I'm just going to say this now, we apologise for butchering any names on this. That's it, exactly. <laughs> one syllable names are a lot easier, yeah. not going to lie. Keep it to your bobs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bob's Steve, Gary's, yeah. Paul's. So this is obviously by Epic History TV. If you're enjoying his content, then please head over to his page. A link will be in the description box down below. If you're enjoying our content, then please like, comment, subscribe, subscribe. hit that notification bell. But we're just going to jump straight into this one. Let's do this. Mistake on the recording, guys. We didn't uh, make the video available for the first two minutes. So... Um, Ignore that bit, we're just going to jump about three minutes in. In the Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars, many were brilliant leaders. A few probably deserved to be marshals, more than some who were. Any selection can only be difficult and highly subjective, but here's our pick of 12 of the okay. best. So, uh, is he Bertrand, starting with the best ones? Napoleon's in the first faithful aide de camp who commanded 4th Corps at the Battle of Leipzig. Clausel, a veteran commander of the war in Spain. Okay. Dessay, Napoleon's close friend, killed at Marengo, mm. aged 31. Prince Eugène, Napoleon's adopted son, a hero of the Russian retreat. Okay. Gérard, one of Napoleon's best corps commanders by 1814, made a marshal by King Louis-Philippe in 1830. Goudon, whose infantry division bore the brunt of the fighting at Auerstedt in 1806, died of wounds near Smolensk in 1812. Junot, who first served with Napoleon at Toulon in 1793, probably committed suicide after his fall from favour in 1813. Okay. La Salle, the Hussar general, among the best light cavalry commanders of the Napoleonic Wars, mm. killed at Wagram, aged 34. Maison, who told his division on the morning of Leipzig that they must win that day or all be killed, made marshal by King Charles X in 1829. Non Souti, the heavy cavalry commander who died of wounds and exhaustion, aged 46. Saint Hilaire, hero of Austerlitz, died of wounds received at Aspern in 1809. Van Damme, of whom Napoleon once said, if I had to invade hell, I'd want him commanding the vanguard. Wow. <laughs> wow. Now, Napoleon's 26 marshals ranked in order of merit. Okay. 26. Marshal Perignon. When Napoleon created the first 18 marshals, four were honorary marshals, recognised for past service to France. Okay. Perignon was one of these. Hmm. A former officer in the Royal Army, he'd won fame in the Revolutionary Wars, fighting the Spanish on the Pyrenees front. Okay. He later served as ambassador to Spain. Mm. After a brief retirement, he was sent to Italy and commanded the French left wing at the disastrous Battle of Novi, where the army was routed by Suvorov's Russians and Perignon was badly wounded and captured. Oh, wow. His appointment as Honorary Marshal in 1804 was a political move by Napoleon, a way to win acceptance for his new empire, by emphasising continuity with the revolution, by rewarding its military heroes. Mm, OK, makes sense. Perignon never held active command as a marshal, but served as Governor of Parma, and later Naples. Hmm. His eldest son, Pierre, was a cavalry officer, killed at Friedland in 1807. Perignon retired in 1813, but refused to support Napoleon when he returned from exile in 1815 and was stripped of his marshal's baton. His rank was later restored by King Louis XVIII. Mm. 25. Marshal Broom. He was justly proclaimed the saviour 
of the Bratvian Republic by saving Holland, he also saved France from invasion, Napoleon. Brun was another marshal whose appointment owed much to politics. As a fiery Republican and former close ally of revolutionary leader Georges Danton, his support was politically like useful for Napoleon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brun Seems joined the like army during the terror, car, the most extreme definitely. period of the revolution. <laughs> his political connections ensured rapid promotion, and he was sent to help put down a counter-revolutionary okay. revolt in Bordeaux. So you're still a bit useful. In 1795, as a 30-year-old brigadier general, he helped Napoleon disperse a royalist mob in Paris mm. with the famous whiff of grape shot. <laughs> Brun then served with Napoleon in Italy, fighting in several of his famous early victories. Mm. He won a reputation as a fierce divisional commander and enthusiastic plunderer of Italian towns and churches. Uh -oh. In 1798, so he commanded dickhead, the really. French mm. occupation of Switzerland, while extorting 200,000 francs from the wealthy Swiss communes, the equivalent of several million dollars today. <laughs> wow. It was said that Brun's personal carriage was so laden with gold when it left Switzerland that it immediately broke down. <laughs> the next year, he won his most. I'm sorry, his but personal when carriage. they say it breaks down, yeah, I'm thinking, oh no. What's happened? Like your battery's gone flat, your exhaust is blown or something. No, the wheels are coming. I'm off. just thinking, like the carriage is like, yeah, look, mate, we've got a problem. We're one horsepower down. <laughs> the wheels <laughs> off. Oh, mate. Oh. Important victory. Don't you you call call commanding French you don't call the AA, the do you? Defeating an Anglo Russian. You don't call. No, you don't call the AA. You call. Look, eh, eh. <laughs> Oh my <laughs> That was God. a good one. Yeah. Come on, that was a no, good one. Come on, not. if you enjoyed that, that was a good one. <laughs> I enjoyed that myself. <laughs> uh, oh. just a monkey with two tambourines just in your head. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the voice plays with. <laughs> Fuck's sake, Jack. They're a fucking military organisation. They have engineers to build fucking bridges, right? They have two geezers who can put a fucking new wheel on a car and go, can you give me another horse? That's how they fix that issue. It's a wagon. <laughs> you catch it. It's a wagon, not a car. Tsunami at the Battle of Castricum and saving France from invasion. But a short, calamitous spell commanding the army of Italy convinced Napoleon that Brun was not fit for high command. Instead, he yeah, sent him to be ambassador to the Army. Ottoman Empire, where That's in 1804, mm. he learned that he'd been made a marshal. Okay, nice. But Brun's lack of delicacy, combined with a towering sense of self-importance, <laughs> did not make him a successful diplomat. <laughs> he was recalled to France, but as governor of the Hanseatic ports, blundered again, drafting a treaty with Sweden that failed to make any mention of the French emperor. Oh. Whether a deliberate insult or act of incompetence, Napoleon was furious. Uh, yeah. Brun was sacked. Of course he was sacked. Brun spent the next seven years at his country estate. He bitterly opposed nice. the return of the Bourbon monarchy in 1814 mm. and rallied to Napoleon when he returned from exile the next year. But in the tumult following Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo, Brun was cornered by a royalist mob in Avignon murdered and tossed into the river Rhone. Oh. 24. Yeah. Marshal Serrault. See, the thing with it though is... My is, guy got cornered in his bedroom, shot and thrown into a river. But then if he's been like plundering so on and so forth yeah. and these stories get through to the men and like he wasn't liked uh, among the general consensus, like not many of the other generals have had that but he's lower on the ranking because he's done all these things like yeah. maybe there's a reason for it maybe he was generally not liked you know he, he retained all the characteristics and severity of an infantry major an honest man with the integrity and reliability but unfortunate as a general napoleon don't know this guy's name Luckily, every team he does. Sepulier <laughs> was another of the four honorary marshals whom Napoleon oh, wished know, to recognise for past service. <laughs> I won't even attempt it that <laughs> In contrast to Brun, Sepulier was a professional soldier of the old school. 
a veteran of the Seven Years' War, mm. and a stern disciplinarian. This background was not necessarily an asset during the French Revolution, when any officer who'd served in the Royal Army was viewed with suspicion. But Colonel Serrurier's training and diligence were soon recognised as assets to the new French Republic. Mm. By 1795, he was a general serving with Napoleon in Italy, where his stand against corruption and looting won him the nickname the Virgin of Italy. <laughs> Serrurier was a reliable, if unspecified, commander the, yeah, the looting, which is who won an important victory at Mondovi at a crucial moment in Napoleon's rise to fame. The follow Watch this one get executed as well, make me look like an absolute idiot about what I said a minute ago. <laughs> he accepted the Austrian surrender at the end of the long siege of Mantua. Two years later, fighting under General Moreau's command, Serrurier and his division Ooh. were cut off by the Russians and forced to surrender. Released on parole, he was back in Paris in time to support Napoleon's coup d'etat of 18 Brumaire. Serrurier then retired from active command, Napoleon becomes but France. Napoleon, mm. remembering his past service, made him an honorary marshal okay, so and governor of Les Invalides, the retirement home and hospital for old soldiers. Okay, yeah. There, shortly before the fall of Paris in 1814, Serrurier oversaw the burning of more than a thousand captured flags and standards to prevent them falling into Allied mm. hands. Okay. 23. Marshal Kellerman. I think that I was probably the boldest general who ever lived, but even I wouldn't have dared to take post there. Napoleon on Kellerman's command post at the Battle of Valmy. Kellerman was another honorary marshal, okay. the oldest at 68, and famed yeah. throughout France as the saviour of the revolution. Mm. A career soldier from a middle-class background, he'd seen distinguished service as a cavalry officer in the Seven Years' War. At the beginning of the Revolutionary Wars, he was a general, commanding a frontier army at the moment of greatest crisis when it seemed foreign invasion was about to stamp out the revolution and restore the Ancien Régime. But at Valmy, in September 1792, Kellerman's Army of the Centre mm, stood its ground, strong. and with a ferocious artillery barrage, persuaded the Prussian army to withdraw. Valmy was not a stunning tactical victory, but it was a turning point of history okay. that saved the infant French Republic. When the revolution prior. took a more radical turn, mm. even a war hero like Kellerman became suspected of royalist links, and spent a year in prison under the threat of the guillotine. Oh. Acquitted and restored to command, oh. he was poised Mate, to look. Those French Revolution like the guillotine. The, uh, the French Mate, they <laughs> lost it with they that thing. They it. were just lit. Chop, 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 chop. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say they had to call the maintenance guy out in case it broke. <laughs> like you know. They, be, they must have just had guillotines on, like, on repeat in case uh, one went wrong. Oh yeah, they definitely had a couple in the in the backlog, you know. Because they, they had more than one going at a time. Just, yeah. That was entertainment for the He public. was poised to oh, launch a new say. offensive in Italy, when he was sidelined. First by General Scherer, then in favour of a rising new talent, General mm. Bonaparte. Kellerman later specialised in army administration and training a role he continued to perform under mm. Napoleon, whilst also entering politics and serving as President of the Senate. Strong. His son, General Francois Etienne Kellerman, followed in his father's footsteps, serving as one of Napoleon's best cavalry nice. commanders. Yeah. 22. Marshal Grouchy. His conduct was as unforeseeable as if his army on the march had been struck by the earthquake and swallowed up. Napoleon Grouchy's failure. When Napoleon returned from his first exile in 1815, he created one last marshal for the upcoming campaign, Emmanuel de Grouchy. Okay. Although now infamous for failing to march to Napoleon's aid during the Battle of Waterloo, mm. up to that moment, Grouchy had had a long and distinguished military career. 
An aristocrat who embraced the French Revolution, Grouchy served with distinction the throughout the Revolutionary Wars, battles, mm -hmm. fighting counter-revolutionaries in the Some of the battles he was in, yeah. like, were, like, it was here, Wagram, Borodino, the Vendée, and serving in Italy, where he was wounded and captured at the Battle of Novi. Under the Empire, Grouchy excelled as commander of a Dragoon division in Marshal Murat's cavalry reserve. He was praised by the Emperor for his part in the great French charge at Eylau. Played an important role buying time for Napoleon at Friedland. Mm. And expertly covered the French right wing at Wagram. For the invasion of Russia, he commanded 3rd Cavalry Corps and was wounded at Borodino. Man, yeah, he was like. In so he survived much. the horrors of the retreat, but was left so exhausted it took him several months to recover. Wow. Yeah, wow. He returned for Napoleon's 1814 campaign in France and was wounded twice more. Grouchy was made a marshal at the start of the Hundred Days campaign and commanded Napoleon's right wing at Ligny. After the battle was won, he was ordered to pursue the retreating Prussians to prevent them joining up with Wellington's Anglo-Allied army. Mm. Two days later, as the Battle of Waterloo raged ten miles to the west, Grouchy made the fateful decision to follow his written orders, rather than march to join Napoleon, and has been widely blamed for the French Emperor's defeat ever since. Grouchy's vilification is not wholly fair, not least because Napoleon rarely encouraged his marshals to show initiative, mm. and often flew into rages if they deviated from his written orders. Oh, okay, Nor should yeah, one yeah. blunder obscure the distinguished record of one of the Grande Armée's best cavalry generals. Grouchy fled to America after Napoleon's defeat to escape royalist reprisals, but was pardoned and returned to France in 1820. Mm. 21. Marshal Monsey. He was an honest man. An honest man. Monsey ran away from home to join the army at the age of 15. After 20 years of uneventful service, he'd risen no higher than the rank of captain. Mm. But then came the French Revolution. Most French officers were aristocrats, who, if they did not actively oppose the revolution, were nevertheless regarded as politically suspect. <laughs> the result was that three quarters of them either fled the country or were dismissed from the army. Monsey, a middle class officer with no strong political views, reaped the benefit with meteoric promotion. By 1794, General Monsey was leading the army of the Western Pyrenees to victory over the Spanish on what was, admittedly, a relative backwater of the Revolutionary Wars. Wow. Yeah, wow, in 1797, indeed. he was dismissed for alleged royalist sympathies, but reinstated in time to support Napoleon's coup of 18 Brumaire. By his own admission, Monsey was a sensitive officer. Honest, honourable, but lacking a ruthless streak mm. or iron will to succeed. Has affected my spirit Napoleon was aware of his history. limitations as a general, but made him a marshal in 1804, as part of his emphasis on continuity between the Republic and his new empire. Right. Monsey was appointed Inspector General of the Gendarmerie, France's militarised police force and spent most of the rest of his career commanding reserve troops. Oh, so he wasn't he too only involved. held one field command again. In light of his victorious record against the Spanish, he was given command of a corps <clears throat> for the 1808 invasion of Spain, operating in the south of the country with mixed success. Mm. In 1809 he was replaced by General Junot and returned to France. Monsey's finest hour came in the dying days of the Empire, leading the National Guard of Paris in a courageous but doomed defence of the French capital. In 1815, the restored King of France, Louis XVIII, ordered Marshal Monsey to preside at the trial of Marshal Ney for treason. Monsey regarded Ney as a hero for having saved mm. so many French lives in Russia, and refused declaring, if I am not allowed to save my country, nor my own life, then at least I will save my honour. 
After a short spell in prison, Monse was allowed to... So he was an honest man. I've got to a lot himself. of for that, yeah. yeah. ...to resume his military career, becoming governor of Les Invalides, in which role he presided over the repatriation of Napoleon's remains from St Helena in 1840. At the end of the ceremony, the 86-year-old Marshal Monse announced, and now, let us go home to die. Mm. 20. Jesus. Marshal Poniatowski. A man of noble character, brimming over with honour and bravery. Poland. Prince Józef Poniatowski was the King of Poland's nephew, but his military career began as a cavalry officer in the Austrian army, even serving as aide-de-camp to Emperor Józef II himself. In 1789, he transferred to the Polish army with the rank of Major General, okay. but could not save Poland from partition by its rapacious neighbours, mm. Russia, Prussia and Austria. By 1795, Poland had vanished from the map, swallowed up by its rivals. After Napoleon's defeat of Prussia in 1806, Poniatowski decided loyal service to the French Emperor was the best way to win Poland's restoration, although he never fully trusted Napoleon's aims. Sombre, serious and brave, Poniatowski proved an able commander of Duchy of Warsaw forces in Napoleon's service. When war broke out with Austria in 1809, okay. while Napoleon advanced on Vienna, Poniatowski waged a brilliant supporting campaign against a larger Austrian army in Galicia. For the invasion of Russia, he commanded the Polish Fifth Corps. He and his troops distinguished themselves first at Smolensk and again at Borodino, okay. leading the attack on the right wing. Poniatowski and his corps performed heroically throughout the campaign, motivated in part by their old animosity towards Russia. Okay. But by the end of the retreat, Fifth Corps had been virtually destroyed. Oh. Poniatowski remained loyal to Napoleon, even though the disaster in Russia paved the way for the Russian reoccupation of Poland. He rejoined Napoleon in Germany in 1813 and was given command of the Polish Eighth Corps. On the eve of the Battle of Leipzig, he was made a marshal by Napoleon, in recognition of his service and to inspire his Polish troops. Mm. Poniatowski was the only non-Frenchman to receive this honour. Wow. He and his troops fought with their usual tenacity and skill at Leipzig, holding key villages on the southern front against the Austrian and Prussian onslaught. At the end of the battle, Poniatowski commanded part of the rearguard, but their only escape route, a bridge over the Elster River, was blown up too soon. Badly wounded, Poniatowski tried to escape by riding his horse across the river, but he was swept from his saddle and drowned. He had been a marshal for just four days. In the short term, Poniatowski's loyalty to France achieved nothing, as following Napoleon's defeat, Russia occupied Poland for the next century. The next century. But Poniatowski's legend lived on, a model of Polish patriotism that inspired future generations. Nice. Yeah. Only used 19. that man, Marshal Jordan. Jordan is a true patriot, and that is the answer to many things that have been said about him, Napoleon. As a young French private, Jourdan saw combat in Georgia during the American Revolutionary War, but he then caught a fever that led to his discharge and plagued him for the rest of his life. When the French Revolution began, he was elected captain of his local National Guard unit, fought at the battles of Gemap and Honschauter, and was rapidly promoted to general. In 1794, he made his name defeating coalition forces at the Battle of Fleurus. This was a crucial victory of the Revolutionary War, which handed France control of Belgium for 20 years. It was also notable for the French Army's oh use God. of balloon reconnaissance, wow. 
the first That's effective crazy. use of aircraft yeah. in military history. Jourdan became a prominent politician under the Directory, lending his name to a law that formalised France's policy of mass conscription. Okay. As a committed Republican, Jourdan refused to support Napoleon's coup of 18 Brumaire, but his fame as the victor of Fleurus was enough to ensure he became a marshal in 1804. Mm. Jourdan was on good terms with Napoleon's elder brother, Joseph. When Joseph became King of Spain in 1808, mm. Jourdan went with him as his military oh. advisor. Yeah, that's interesting. But the situation in Spain would prove beyond Jourdan's military skills to solve. Mm. He faced stubborn resistance yeah. from the Spanish and Portuguese, supported by the British, and an equally stubborn refusal to cooperate from other French marshals in Spain. Theoretically under Jourdan's command, but who repeatedly ignored his orders and openly questioned his competence. Marshal Soult in Andalusia was a prime offender, while Marshal Victor's insubordination at the Battle of Talavera contributed directly to the French defeat. Oh, wow. Struck by another bout of ill health, Jourdan went home to recover. Two years later, he returned to Spain. But at the Battle of Vitoria in 1813, he and King Joseph were outmaneuvered and decisively beaten by Wellington, mm. leading to the collapse of the Bonapartist Kingdom of Spain. Jourdan never held a major command again, but his 20 years of service and evident patriotism were widely recognised and respected. Okay. He was made a peer by Napoleon, a count by Louis XVIII, and died in 1833 while serving as governor of Les Invalides. Wow. Mm. Perignon, Brune, Serrurier, Kellerman, Grouchy, Monsey, Poniatowski, Jourdan. Eight down, 18 to go. Oh, Join Jesus, us for part indeed. two, when we'll My... continue the countdown. Yeah. Coming soon. I really Thank you enjoyed to... that, what about yourself, Jack? Yeah, man. It's good to see what they were doing and what happened to them afterwards as well. Yeah, it really is interesting. If you're enjoying our content, then please like, comment, subscribe, subscribe hit that notification bell, but we will catch you in the next video. See you in a bit.